next few months we're going to be taking a look at this book that most of you will have heard of I expect Dane Ortland's Gentle and Lowly and it's one of the most most wonderful devotional books I've ever come across profoundly helpful lingers in the mind and in the heart which is which is the point of it Dane Ortland's book which is based on Thomas Goodwin's work the Heart of Christ. What a wonderful front cover that is. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So Ortland's book is based on Goodwin's book. This is the source. This is a book that's helpful to our uh, modern minds and modern ears. So what we'll do is we'll have Mary and I reading a chapter, very short chapters, and discuss it, prayer, that kind of thing. And we hope that it will be a blessing to those of you who tune into the podcast, those of you who tune into the YouTubes. Um, and we hope that it's a blessing to maybe some of you who are tuning in to listen to this, having encountered us in the streets. Maybe you're listening or watching this with a view to reporting us to the police. Um, thinking of a gentleman that accused me of being a homophobic fascist on Sunday outside the church that we were witnessing outside of, spoken to Fiona, the leader of a quote-unquote church um, in the centre of Edinburgh. Um, and we'll be having dialogue with her in weeks to come about the false gospel that they proclaim. So whoever it is, whatever your context is, I'm hoping that this is going to be profound help to you in the hope that even if you are in error, even if you're even teaching error, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you can turn to the heart of Christ and be saved. Before I do the first instalment of this, I want to share something with you, believe it or not, from another book. This is by somebody called Sinclair Ferguson, whose theology overall we would agree with, but when it comes to the Holy Spirit, because it's from a cessationist perspective, we would obviously have a very different understanding of uh, the New Testament place and practice of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and that kind of thing. But this is the book. The Trinitarian Devotion of John Owen. It's not a long book, it's quite a short book. But the bit that I'm just going to read to you now, and I've actually prepared a couple of uh, slides for you, it's one of the best, it's one of the best things that I've read in years. I read this book a number of years ago and I've reread it recently because somebody at the gym had asked me about the Trinity. Excuse me. And <clears throat> I'm gonna let I'm gonna read it to you and I'm gonna let you see it. But the reason I'm connecting this particular paragraph or two with Dane Ortland's book Gentle and Lowly and Thomas Goodwin's original sixteenth century work, The Heart of Christ Puritan work, is that whether you are a false church leader, fake, you know, false disciple, false Christian, um, teaching people wrong, wrong things, leading people astray, destroying the gospel, um, or whether you are a believer and you just struggle to rest. You know, we all do, don't we? We all, we all struggle to rest and know the love of, of God. And that's why this book is so popular. This is why church leaders use it in their, as, a, as a foundation of their teaching series. I know at least one church leader that I've seen recently who's just teaching through the book. I suppose that's good in a way. We're wanting this to be a devotional content, but 
So whether you're coming from a kind of place of being false or whether you're coming from a place of being genuine but struggling, this that I'm about to share with you now from Sinclair Ferguson's book is is the answer, is the linchpin, it's the starting place and it's the finishing place. I want I want you just to see this. Okay, and think to begin with about this very provocative thought from Martin Luther. Your thoughts of God are too human. And that's true again, that's true for us. It's true for all of us, but it's particularly true for people, like I mentioned, who accuse me of being a homophobic fascist because I was preaching the gospel or representing, spreading the gospel, being a witness to the gospel. Your thoughts of God are too human. Let me show you what I mean. This is this is, this is in the words of uh, Sinclair Ferguson. Father, I pray now, just as we look at this, that you would bless your people with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of who you are, that we would know you better. I pray that you would save people. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is Ferguson writing. And again, just so you're clear, this is Sinclair Ferguson. He's, I don't know, in his 60s or 70s today, Scottish, uh, fine Scottish preacher, um, spent time in America and that kind of thing. And he's speaking about the work of John Owen. Now, in the same way that Thomas Goodwin was the focus of Dane Ortland's book, we have these Puritan writers, Puritan content that's being adapted or interpreted, explained into our modern cultures, our modern churches. We don't have stuff like this today, or at least very rarely do we have stuff like this today. So this is what's going on. Let me start off with this quote for you. The truth is that we are prone to looking through the wrong end of the telescope. We move from man to God. But true thinking, thinking that recognises the real distinction between the creator and the creature, between the infinite and the finite, must always begin with God. Whether you're a Jehovah's Witness, as we met on Sunday, whether you are a fake Christian, who we met on Sunday, or whether you're a fake Christian leader, who we met on Sunday, or whether you're just struggling as a believer with the mind-blowing reality of the Trinity or the heart of Christ, the cross, the gospel. This is the answer. We must always begin with God. The truth is, at the beginning, the truth is that we are prone to looking through the wrong end so that we tend to move from man to God. So what does that mean? Well, when it comes to the Trinity and Jehovah's Witnesses or Muslims or whatever, the thought of God being three in one is just a mind blow. And because it blows our minds, we then struggle, we, re we reject it. It couldn't possibly be, or we interpret it as being blasphemous. But it's because we're starting from man and moving to God instead of starting with God and moving to man. It is not so much that we describe God in anthropomorphic terms, i.e. that somehow we describe God by using man as the descriptor, that's what anthropomorphic means. It is that he has, cre he has created us in a theomorphic way. We are the miniatures. In us, created finite people are embedded microcosmic reflections of realities that are true of God himself in a macrocosmic, uncreated, infinite way. Lots of words, that's why I've put it onto a, onto a slide for you. 
What does that mean? Well, it sim- simply put, instead of starting with man and moving to God, well, I don't get three in one. That doesn't make sense. That's blasphemous. That doesn't, it, 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 it detracts from the glory of God by having a son, surely. How can God have a son? How can Jesus love a leper? How can Jesus love us when we struggle with sin routinely, daily struggling? When we move from man to God, we're moving in the wrong way. We're looking as Ferguson, as Sinclair Ferguson is saying, we're looking through the wrong end of the telescope. It's worth just rereading this because it's so good. And this is the answer, again, for all of us. But I would say for those who are who believe that Jesus is resurrected, Jesus is just everywhere. Jesus isn't coming. The guy that I was speaking to who was uh, lambasting us um, wanted us to know that Jesus was everywhere. Jesus was in his dog, Julius. Jesus was not coming again physically. He was already here. He's in the clouds. He's in the seagull. He's a Christian, apparently. He believes in Jesus, apparently. He believes he reads a Bible, apparently. But he denies that Jesus is coming again. These people are starting, and I'm, I'm straddling here. I hope you can follow what I'm saying. I'm straddling people who aren't Christians and think they are with all of us who are true believers, but who also struggle with these realities. The truth is that we are prone to looking through the wrong end of the telescope. We move from man to God. And that's false thinking. That's faulty thinking. But true thinking, thinking that recognizes the real distinction between the creator and the creature, between the infinite and the finite, must always begin with God. It is not so much that we describe God in anthropomorphic terms. It is that he has created us in a theomorphic way. We are the miniatures. In us, created finite people are embedded microcosmic reflections of realities that are true of God himself in a macrocosmic, uncreated, infinite way. Maybe putting it slightly easier. John Piper, speaking of marriage, calls it a parable of permanence, the disaster, the blasphemy, the impossibility that it is to redefine marriage is because of this. It's the same principle. Marriage on earth is a parable of permanence. When a man and a woman come together in unison, it's a parable of permanence because it's what? It's a copy of the original between Christ and and his body. In us, created finite people are embedded microcosmic reflections of realities that are true of God himself. This is, this should be taught to every new disciple. And this should be in our toolbox, in our kit bag, in our locker, when it comes to rebuking and rejecting either the accusations of the devil, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. And what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful man. So whether it's our struggle with the accusations of the enemy or the false brothers, the false believers, Christians, Christian church leaders, churches, we don't start with man. And move to God, we start with God. The Heart of Christ. This is the book that was written by the old English pastor Thomas Goodwin and that Dane Ortland based his book on. From a creaturely perspective, therefore, this is uh, Sinclair Ferguson again, just finishing. 
from a creaturely perspective, therefore, God's Trinitarian being is therefore not to be thought of as irrational, but as supra-rational. We reject the gospel or we reject, the, we reject the, the notion of the Trinity because it blows our minds. Because it's, to us somehow it's not rational. But what is beyond human reason is not necessarily contradictory to true and ultimate reason. I remember as a child believing in Jesus, believe, responding to God in faith and having this same childlike thought, not expressed in that same way. I'll pull it up for you again. What is beyond human reason is not necessarily contradictory to true and ultimate reason. A child of five can understand this. Just because I can't understand it doesn't mean that it's not true. And indeed, if I could understand everything, wouldn't it be an epic disappointment? If I could somehow get God into my little pea-sized brain and understand him, his ways, his thoughts, his wisdom, his affections, wouldn't it be an epic disappointment? And that's exactly what's going on when, again, for the true Christian, the true believer, when we're struggling with a sense of distance from God because of our sin or because of our anxiety or weakness or for false believers who want to get it all on their terms. Who are you? You know, most famously in, a, in a recent years, Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry, the well-known celebrity actor, author, broadcaster, whatever, just his disgusting attitude towards God, blasphemy. Who do you, th this is Stephen Fry speaking to God, who do you think you are, God? For there to be sickness, children with sickness on the earth. Who do you think you are? This is what happens when we start with man and move to God. The, the finite mind cannot comprehend the infinite mind. While we can, while we can comprehend, sorry, while we can apprehend God's godness, it is clear that we cannot comprehend it. To think otherwise would be to fall under Martin Luther's criticism of Erasmus, your thoughts of God are too human, the heart of Christ. Your thoughts of God are too human. I want to leave that with us today to reflect on, and I'll come back with Mary, and we'll do the first part of this, uh, looking at the passage in Matthew eleven twenty nine, speaking of the gentleness and lowliness of Jesus Christ. And I hope that's been a help because that principle of moving from God to man, that's the right way of thinking and anything else is faulty. That should be not just a way of answering questions about the Trinity, whether you're a Jehovah's Witness or a Muslim, or whatever, but it should be the basis from which you rebuke those who are false and those who are spreading error and heresy. The principle that I was at pains to stress with the church leader over the weekend and with these false Christians who think they know God and they don't. They think they know Jesus and they don't. They think Jesus is in a seagull and in a dog called Julius. It's absurd. It's laughable. It's mock worthy. If you read the beginning of the screw tape letters, C.S. Lewis says something to that effect. If the devil won't yield to something, then mockery. He can't, he can't handle being mocked. And it was mock when that guy said to me at the weekend, and if you're watching, mate, to think that you're a Christian and that you're a Bible-believing man, a Bible-believing Christian, and that Jesus isn't coming back, that he's already here, and that he's in your dog, Julius, and that he's in the seagulls and the clouds in the sky, I rebuke you in Jesus' name because you can't show me, you can't even begin to show me that from the scriptures. And that's the principle we come 
to false churches today like Paul went to synagogues in the first century. The basis of our argument is reasoning from Scripture. And we start with God and we move to man. We don't start from man in pride and arrogance. Who do you think you are, God? We don't start from man. We start from God. Your thoughts of God are infinitely too human. Maranatha.